If you would have asked me only two, three years ago, I wouldn't have ever have been able to tell you what gaslighting was or what gaslighting is, nor that I had been a victim of its traumatic, life-changing effects. And that's the thing about gaslighting and emotional abuse. It can sneak into your life unknowingly and before you know it, you it leads you to this breaking point where you are doubting your sanity, your reality, and your life is spiraling out of control. Gaslighting is insidious in that it can begin so, in a, such a subtle way as the victim's confidence is chipped away slowly and leads into further type of further types of abuse that the victim is coerced into and coerced into submission and the wants of the narcissist, the wants of the abuser. And I was in my 20s when I met my abuser and he was charming he was accomplished he complimented me he made me laugh the chemistry between us was uh, it was absolutely palpable we were inseparable we traveled together i was in love and it, this was my perfect life this was everything that i'd ever wanted and there was nothing that could have brought me down or convinced me otherwise off of that high that i felt it did finally come crashing down though and things they broke apart only a few years later and I was in the midst of a breakdown contemplating taking my own life and I can't pinpoint exactly when the gaslighting started and I had thought that there were misunderstandings and it was just me being stupid and too emotional and forgetting things or making a big deal out of nothing and he was the he was always the brains of the relationship in a way but i like i kind of competed with him for that space and i was fortunate i felt or i was supposed to feel fortunate whenever he came to correct me if i made some type of an error in my judgment or in my intellect and that was the beginning only the beginning of what was to come Next was the cheating, and then there was a day that I was about to confront him after the evidence that I had found on a phone um, that we had both used, and he uttered the words that were my undoing, and those words were, you do know that you are imagining things, and that that is the first thing sign of craziness right you're schizophrenic and staring at me was a man with a cold stare and black shark eyes you are crazy i don't know how i could be with somebody who makes up lies about me like that and i looked at the phone which was empty and no evidence of messages showing he had been unfaithful but they had definitely been there and i had seen them or at least i thought i had at this point, I no longer lived with him, and instead, um, he was replaced by Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, who on some days was loving and calculated, and then on other days was very manipulative, brutally, uh, verbally abusive, and these changes in character were another form of ammunition in the mind games of the gaslighting and allowing the gaslighting to go undetected by granting me those crumbs, by granting me those good days. It turned me into thinking things weren't such so bad and they weren't as bad as I thought that they were. This is also a form of control that would keep me from leaving the relationship before he was ready to discard me. And it gave him further power by accusing me of being ungrateful, 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 ungrateful. That's all I ever heard. Whenever I attempted to protest any kind of significant or even insignificant unacceptable behavior. And after, you know, all I've done for you, how could you think any anything negatively of me? And I'm, I'm perfect. I don't make any mistakes. And so the abuse continued because I stayed. As the days dwindled away, I walked on eggshells not knowing what I would do wrong next, what I would say that would be wrong and that would spark a rage. And as a result, I became a shadow, a shell of my former self. And with this loss of this confidence that I used to have, I lost my ability to defend myself. And as a result, was subjected to further um, forms of, of a cruel abuse and torture. And despite feeling like my life was falling apart, I considered leaving instead and I clung on to that relationship though attempting to repair the damage and I believed that I had done this damage and even if I had decided to leave earlier than what I did I felt that I had no one and nowhere to go and in some situation and certain situations that I was in I did I truly did not have anywhere to go and no one to go to despite how low I had 
gotten, I was still unable to identify the relationship had been abusive, whether out of denial or a lack of knowledge or a lack of support and did not reach out. I didn't, I never reached out for any support. And instead the years that followed, I'd experienced horrible debilitating panic attacks. I never ever felt safe. I thought people were following me. I had a gut wrenching fear of certain people who really truly were following me around. And finally, Two years after, I did one of the bravest things that I could have done. I listened to that tiny, itty-bitty little voice that was still residing inside of me, the small voice that for the past 10 years had been silenced by my abuser that had been my apparent crazy. That was my mark of crazy, that little intuition, that voice of intuition, and that small voice that knew I should have left but, but that I didn't have the confidence to listen in and to truly listen to what that voice was saying. And now I realized that that little voice was my gut instinct telling me that my life could improve and needed, I needed to open up and I needed to seek professional support and help. And it takes an enormous amount of courage to open up and engage in the important healing work that it takes after abuse. And in asking for support, we are opening ourselves up to be vulnerable when it was our vulnerabilities that were used against us and exploited in the relationship. So we are really laying things bare and putting our trust in people and having to trust people who have hurt us in the past. And we are allowing opportunities to feel emotions and have a voice when our emotions and voices were ignored and silenced in the past. And without support though, we risk remaining in abusive relationships and repeating patterns attracting toxic people into our lives and this is by no means an exhaustive list but these are some of the things that i have learned and done as a part of my recovery personally which has allowed me to begin to love and trust in myself once again and i would like to note that the abuse that i that i was subjected to um because and what I explained is what my subjective version of what gaslighting is. It, it is a form of emotional abuse. And re I realized in realizing that we have had an experience of abuse, it is important that we do not state this to the abuser. And accusing a person of abuse can put us at an increased risk of physical abuse and a more negative consequences. So instead, seek support from people who are trusted, a professional, a coach. And I've acknowledged the abuse and acknowledging the abuse has been a long and arduous, difficult, but necessary process. And due to the manipulation I experienced, I've been challenged with frequent questioning of myself. And what if I remembered this incorrectly? And I've spent many sleepless nights trying to rationalize all of the things that happened, making t excuse after excuse excuse for him and these rationalizations and questionings were a coping mechanism that I was using to avoid the pain of admitting that somebody that I loved so much is capable of inflicting such horrible abuse upon me and these uh, these frequently uttered words but he wasn't like that all of the time but I, I mean I guess I'm learning that regardless of the m amount of time it, it even if it's 20%, abuse is abuse. And as we begin to heal, we find this newfound respect for ourselves and becoming unwilling to accept any form of abuse in our lives whatsoever. My name is Sarah Ann Brown, and this is Narcissistic Abuse 101.